Good morning and thank you for joining what is our final virtual open day moth trap of the summer. Now if you joined us last month the weather was quite a bit different from what we have today. It was warm and sunny um, with clear skies and because we'd had such good weather we had quite a good collection of species. Um, it also meant that the moth trap had been sitting in the sun in the morning which meant that the moths were very active which proved to be a bit of a challenge for uh, Dave as he was going through the trap in the morning. I don't think we'll have that problem um, this morning when we go through it, uh, but the highlight species for me last month was probably the pine hawk moth, which was beautiful to, to look at. And please do watch our August open day uh, moth trap video online if you'd like to, if you'd like to see that. Um, and last night it's been drizzly, uh, quite muggy, and it's very overcast this morning. So we'll see what we've been able to catch. I'm not too optimistic it's going to be quite as diverse a range of species as we had last month, but we'll have a good look nonetheless. And as always, bringing this moth trap to you is our in-house moth expert, Dave Shute. Good morning Sarah and everyone watching. Here we are again, this is uh, I think it's our fourth moth trap of the summer um, and it may be our last if the weather starts deteriorating. Um, it's a little bit grey this morning, a little bit of drizzle here and there but um, I think we should have something in there because it's quite warm uh, compared to the uh, last few days. Um, last weekend was National Moth Weekend when uh, there's a concerted effort to collate records from all around the country and unfortunately it was very cold at the weekend um, and also had a northerly wind which prevented any sort of migration or anything like that so I think it was probably not the best weekend but obviously they have to plan these things well in advance. It has warmed up a little since then although the weather's still hit and miss um, but uh, certainly moths will be flying in this, in this sort of warmer weather. Um, so we'll see what's in there. As we get towards the end of the summer the variety tends to go down, uh, the numbers quite often go up of the total number of moths in the trap, but the variety tends to drop, so you may get 15, 20 of one species, so uh, you know, it, it's different. Um, and as we get towards the September time, um, as moth enthusiasts, um, it's a time of year when we're really hopeful of attracting a migrant. Rather like birds, there's a sort of migration season for moths where they disperse and if the winds are in the right direction, easterlies or southerlies, they, um, they sometimes get blown across the channel and, uh, or the North Sea and uh, end up in people's traps. So it can be an exciting time, uh, but equally, you know, it may not happen if the weather's not quite right um, and you just get the local moths, uh, which are standard. So, um, if you're ready, we'll, we'll start. Hopefully. Yeah, let's see what we've caught see what then. We've um, I did collect a few um, from the wall because um, they were going to fly. Um, I don't know whether they will sit if we try and... Uh, I don't know if I can try and knock one out. Whoops. No, oh, he doesn't want to, does he? No, I think he's going to fly, isn't he? Let me try it on a box. So on, on the first box anyway, we have um, a brimstone moth, which is the yellow one. Yep. Lovely. And we've got the very common and large uh, yellow underwing. So at this time of year, yep. they're, they're getting very common. Um, and you might get 20 or more in, in a trap. And the, the other one that's down in there, again, as I say, it's not so colourful this time of year. Mm -hmm. That one's called a square spot rustic. Square spot rustic. Because if you look at the middle bit, there's a... Could you I mean, pop it on the table? Yes, yeah, I'm looking at it from the upside down, so... Oops. You should see... Yes, yeah, you can see. The black see. square. There's a sort of square between the two um, normal marks. So yeah. You've got the top mark, um, which is called the oval, that pale one. Mm -hmm. And then the one below it is called the kidney mark because it's often the shape of a kidney. All right. And then in between the two, there's a little black square, mm -hmm. and that's where the name comes from, square All spot right. rustic. A lot of these autumnal ones are called rustics, probably because they are sort of browny coloured mm. and things. Now, I'd like you to see. I don't know whether you can. Can you find it down inside one of these? You think we can try? So here's one of the. This is the classic bird dropping. Oh, mimic. I remember we... Um, I don't know if it works in there. It, it's um, 
It's called a go. Chinese character. Yeah. And the reason it's called that is because there's a little mark on the wing, the centre of the wing. Oh, I see. Which is supposed right. to be like a, something from the Chinese alphabet, yes. yeah, one of the Chinese letters. Yeah. This one's probably not as fresh as they are sometimes. Um, it looks to me a little less... Yeah, it's not fresh, that, so it's probably the mark has gone a bit. Right. But um, they're fantastic bird dropping mimic. Mm. I mean, that will just sit even openly on a flower, on a... On a leaf because it thinks birds they're so confident birds, birds have a memory that this is a bird dropping i don't want to eat that yeah um and so it's the same with outlines moth outlines you know they birds have a, a sort of memory of what a moth should look like and it should be like that yeah <laughs> a sort of triangular shape. yeah exactly um right um, this one's going to fly away <laughs> unless i catch it Stops flying. Right, so this one's called an oak hook tip. I'm not going to be able to put it out because it's very active. I'll put yeah, it's it very active, yeah. It might settle yeah. once it's down. Okay, the yes, no, that's. So that's Slight a challenge with the reflection, but no, that's fine. Again, the, the wings are slightly hooked at the tip. Yeah, yeah, you can see. It's, it's beautiful. I don't yeah, think lovely. Had one in these sessions before. Well, we'll let him out in a second. And uh, uh -huh. that's just another brimstone I put off the wall. But that's the same as that. Yeah. Uh, there's a wasp crawling about in here, so I might get stung, which will be added entertaining. <laughs> Occupational hazard. <laughs> And here, um, on the back of this one, is a shield bug. Oh, yes, um, yeah. There's a lot of those in here today. This one's a red-legged shield bug. Yeah. And they come off the trees and they're attracted to light. Um, and and yes. the moth we are looking the at in inside, here... moth inside, which I'll take the lid off, is a dusky thorn. So, oops. Oh, sorry, don't want to squash Mr. Shield Bug. And so that's a dusky thorn. Oh, that so is. They're the ones that, that is they're just... geometer moths, but they sit with their wings angled always like that. Because um, if you think they're trying to mimic a dead leaf, yeah. Then if they look slightly curled up, then it's like the curling up of a yeah, leaf, drying so. of a leaf. Yeah, it's just yeah. absolutely amazing. You can see their antennae just flush to the to the body if right, I zoom yes. in. And if they're if they've yeah. got um, you can just sort of, see if it. they're hairy or sort of um, we we'll call it pectinate, then uh, then that will be um, a male. So right. the male have the the extra hair on the antennae to pick up the pheromones of the females. Mm -hmm. So it helps them to locate the, the females. They give off the pheromones, and, and the males come in. So you can sex some moths by that. I'm sorry, these are, some of these are in pots but they were on the wall I knew they would fly if I took them off and do it but this one uh, is called a light emerald so it's oh no doesn't want to we <laughs> might have to let him settle again okay um, yeah, Elliot is all settled now do it that way. yeah okay well look at the the light well, light or white emerald and the same with this one um, now this one is one of two species we haven't had before this time um, it's either a grey or a dark dagger um, oh <laughs> they're not going to sit for us are they today no they're a little bit we might try late they might calm down. so they've got a little black line on them which is the dagger the shape of the dagger um, but unfortunately they're identical as adults but quite different as caterpillars so if you found the caterpillar you can identify it to the species um, but when it's in the adult stage, they were, unless you dissected it or something, they, would, uh, they wouldn't accept the record as one or the other. Oh, so right. you just say this is grey or dark dagger. Um, that came from there. Yeah. So that, I think there's one more that I'd potted and this is one of your favourites. It's a plume moth. Um, oh, yes. Which looks like a T-shaped. Look at that. And... It's just not a moth. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> and that's um, 
a common plume that mm. one um, you get various types um, if you, you if your garden is slightly overgrown like mine is and <laughs> you get um, the bind weeds with big white flowers um, there's a white plume rather nice thing um, which feeds on the leaves of bindweed so um, if you have a lot of bindweed crawling up your wall mm. then have a look for that even if you just disturb the leaves they sometimes just jump around a bit so uh, but that's common plume it's sort of brown job right I've got to watch this wasp in here somewhere the problem with wasps is they will attack moths in the trap sometimes oh really um, you know if they, they can be aggressive uh, same with hornets they will um, they can get in and uh, cause havoc um, so if you see a hornet arriving at night when you're putting the trap out it's probably best not to run the trap that night and certainly if you've got a hornet's nest in the vicinity um, that was a shield bug <laughs> then uh, you shouldn't run it at all while that nest is active so even if it means a whole summer gone because uh, obviously they'll move on and make another nest the following year but they can really decimate the inside of a moth trap sometimes um, so in here we've got we're gonna have quite a few of these more large yellow underwings um, I mean, they're very bland mm -hmm. above, quite large, mm -hmm. but they do. I don't know if this will show it. If I, you can oh, just, you just oh, got just yeah, catch the orange just off. There. Yeah, you did just oh. get a flicker of it. And there's another one in there, and then on this side, apart from another shield bug, there's a wainscot. Oh yeah, um, common wainscot. Yeah. There we go. Which is very straw-like, and mm -hmm. um, so again, it would sit in sort of dry grass or something like that to kind of camouflage yes itself. yeah we're very well camouflaged with Some these striations these down on it now the the light emerald has settled yep. down now so that's you know you get reflection off the yeah tin, there we go all right so that's a geometer like the brimstone so it will lie yeah. flat um it's slightly faded but it's still got some, some green on it and the dark dark dagger and the gray yes dagger dark dagger or gray dagger and here, um, oops, there's lots of these shield bugs everywhere. <laughs> um, we've got another large yellow underwing. And here we've got the one with the best name in the book, Cetaceous Hebrew Character, one of our favourites. Uh, I'll put him there. Oh, no, oh, no, no. I didn't want him. Go right, here. no, off. Uh, gone, gone. gone, gone, gone. gone. Oh, dear, there might be more, there probably will be more, yeah. actually. And here, and here we have a a snout, and that's all it's called. It's a called snout. a snout, and you'll see why. Hello, snout. Mm -hmm. And a brimstone, brimstone next to it. Here again, yeah. But you can see how it's got long palps mm. sticking out the front. Try and turn this round. And um, that uh, that becomes very common at this time of year. It's, a, it's definitely an autumnal moth. But rather nice condition that one. Yeah. And another large yellow underneath. Okay, next one. We've got um, a couple more wainscots and a large yellow underwing. And a square spot of rustic and a wasp. I think. Uh, actually, no, that might not be. I, I, it's difficult to see that one. I, I don't want to get the wasp stung. Where is it? There's the wasp. Should we try and get him out? <laughs> Oops. That right. was the wainscot going. I think the, the wasp did go, didn't it? It's not there I anymore. didn't see a wasp. No, I didn't. But anyway, it's not You have there. got a moth on your thumb. I have a little tiny yeah, um, yeah. scop area of my... my Right. Micro. Let's so be careful of this one, not to uh, stand on it. No, I'll put that there. There we go. I'll pick him up. Okay. Come on. Come on. So these, Dave, are. So we got Wayne Scotts again. Yes. Yeah. And was there something else in there? There's the large yellow underwing under again. Yeah. There's the Wayne Scott. Yeah. And as you okay. see, it fly. Oh, it's landed on you. <laughs> Lovely. 
Thank um, you. Here we are. When it was flying then, um, you could see that it had... There we go. Um, you could see that it had white underwings when it flew, um, and that would separate it from smoky wainscot, which when it flew, the underside would be smoky coloured, grey. Mm -hmm. But when that was flying around there, it was pure white underneath. Mm. And uh, oh, the thing that didn't come out after all that was this thing. Um, and I still can't really see it, but I think it probably is a square spot rustic. I don't know if it will come out. Oh, there we are. Yeah, I think it's square spot rustic, as the other one was. So this is the sort of thing you get, large yellow underwing festival. Yeah, the festival is. A party of them. <laughs> They're glamping in our lovely moth trap. Yep. There's lots of those. Mm. And on this side, this is a slightly different one. It's a rather subtle thing, but if you look at it with the thing, you might be able to look at it. It's quite well, it's got little tracery lines around the oval and the kidney, little white circles around mm. it. It's smaller than the other things we've been looking at. And that's called a vines rustic. It's much paler grey than the, the sort of general brown rustics that we've been yeah. looking at. And it has quite well marked circles around the around the kidney and the, and mm -hmm. the oval. That's a vines rustic. Everything's rustic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, more large yellow underwing. Um, there is a yeah, another one there. Let's look at that one. Woo, lost that one, sorry. Gone. Um, yeah, these um, large yellow underwings, when you just look at them like this, and it does confuse people because the colours vary tremendously. It the does, upper isn't side. it? Yeah, these are all the same. So you, you had that great bunch of them just now, and they're yeah. all different, slightly different and there's shades. Another one. And there's another one. But you can tell, once you've got into it, you can tell because they all have that s s rather straight parallel sides. They're quite large. They're larger than most other of this sort of moth that comes out now, underwing moths. Now, there are several underwings, other other ones, but that was a straw dot just flew off there. But don't about that. Uh, right. And talking of which, uh, just check there's anything underneath. Oops, something else gone there. Um, there is a large yellow underwing again there, but on the top here is a, one of the other underwings. You can see how much smaller it is. Um, oh, cranky, and, yeah. And that's called the longest name in the book is the lesser broad bordered yellow underwing. <laughs> um, and it's a horrible thing to have to keep writing in your notebook. Yes. <laughs> or typing. Um, so that um, you can see it's much smaller than yeah. the, the, the large. And the broad border it reflects again the underside. Yeah, see a size um, comparison. Whereby the I don't know if I can get it into a pot. Um, the underside will be um, yellow or yellow orange, but the border at the trailing edge will be very thick black. Very thick black. So there's a sort of isolated orange area and then a big thick black, which is broad bordered. Um, right. And there's a large and a small. So this is the lesser. Um, and there is a. I may not be able to get that out. Um, I think it will probably fly. But... Oh no, it didn't. So as it flies there, you probably can just pick up the orange. Yes, oh yeah. As it goes, and then you know, the very black border, very strong black border. Mm. So it's less a broad border, yeah. yellow underwing. And here's another large yellow underwing. And it looks like a worn square spot rustic, and another large yellow, and another brimstone. So we're getting very mm. repetitive. Um, that, that's a, a nice large yellow underwing. There. And here we have, whoa, something gone. And um, we've got a burnished brass, which I know, again, we, they're rather nice, better with the sun on them. Um, another brimstone underneath and another snout. 
So I'll put that there. So you've got a snout the in there. Burnished brass is nice to burnished, see. Burnished brass, yeah. Yeah, there we are. And the little one is a micro, um, what they call a grass veneer. There's a whole oh, series right. of them. Um, not easy to identify. Okay. All right. And in here, no wasps. In here is another rustic. This one's called a rosy rustic. Um, because when it's fresh, it's slightly pink. Um, it's possibly that one isn't as pink as some I've seen, but. I don't know if that's in a good position for you, but mm -hmm. so as you can see, as this as we get to the end of summer, everything's rusty. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Except the brimstones, which are still colourfully yellow. More large yellow underwings. And another thing that what is that? Hmm. Another thing that people um, sometimes confuse as moth are these things in here which are caddis flies and I've, when you're starting mothing they come in quite different shapes and sizes and uh, you know it's very easy to think well is that a moth mm. you start thumbing through the book um, no, it does look like one doesn't it the secret to those is they've got hugely long antennae yes yeah you can really see and uh, but they are attracted to light in big numbers sometimes, especially if you live in a damp area with wetlands and things. And there we've got a large, another square spot rustic, a large yellow underwing, a snout. <laughs> uh, ew, that's different. Um, this one here is a turnip, it's just called the turnip. A turnip. Yeah, again, it's a rather dull thing. That one there on the edge there. This one here? Uh, here. Oh, here, sorry, right. Here we go. And the name turnip has come from. I presume, I actually don't know. I think it must be the fruit plant, must be um, right. fruit, vegetables of some yeah. sort. So they'll eat the leaves or something of the plant. I, I'd have to look that up. It's a common-ish moth, but not regular in traps. If it's starting to warm up, yeah, it is. you'll see it hasn't got a, a yellow underwing. That's one of the, you know, as you might think all these little brown ones are yellow underwings, mm. but you'll see it, it's pale underneath. So uh, it's quite narrow. Um, as with birds, there's a certain jizz to moths that the more you do, the more you sort of just tell by the shape yeah. Sometimes uh, it doesn't work all the time, but uh, there was a nice square spot rustic in in oh, yeah, it must have been on the other side. Uh, yeah, there. Oh yes. Because yeah. it it shows that black square in the middle quite well. And the yes. other one on the under the other side there was a, something else there. I think there was a this one here. Is I think a white point. That one, it, they look a bit like clay sometimes. But I think that's a white point. Now, as I say, at this time of year, you're not going to get the really colourful ones like the brims, apart from the brimstone. Uh, there's another square spot rustic and another of the lesser broad bordered yellow underwings. Mm -hmm. There. And a caddis fly again. And another caddis fly somewhere. Gone, the caddis fly's gone, yeah. And it's more square spot rustics. And we've got another cetaceous Hebrew character, so you might be able to get that one if the other one flew off. Again, the, the character is supposed to be representative of something in the Jewish alphabet this sort of black yeah. uh, mark on the wing mm. often we get a lot of those in a trap this time of year but we haven't had very many today and this is just large yellow underwings there's a really super one there you know, in terms of freshness mm. You know, everything's sharp. Yeah. One of the features of large yellow underwing is those little black 
nicks at the end of the wing. The little yeah. uh, wedge is black and they always have that which other underwings don't have. Even on a worn specimen like that, it's still got those black, they call them pips I think, at the bottom. Yes, of them. yeah. Yeah, you really see, see the difference. Uh. But there's still large yellow underwings and here's more. <laughs> um, so again here we've got a different rustic but this is this is one that would confound beginners because it, well, it just looks like all the other brown ones that we've seen but in fact this one in here is a flounced rustic. Crikey. Um, where can I put him? This one? Yeah, can I put him down on the end there? Um, a flounced rustic. Flou I don't quite know where that term comes from. I mean there are subtle things to note on them. There, there are a couple of black bars in the middle of the wing near the, where they join. Um, sort of vertical black bars. And uh, the shape again is slightly sort of more um, triangular shape than a lot of these other underwing ones which have been straight, you know. But it is tricky. Uh, you, you get to the stage where you, you recognise the very common ones and then you start looking at these slightly different ones. Uh, there's another square spot rustic and another cetaceous Hebrew character and a large yellow underwing there as well. I'm running out of space there. Again, large yellow underwing, another snout, Woo, whatever that was, gone, and uh, a wainscot. There's yeah, so nothing different there. Ah, another burnished brass. That's all on that one. It's quite a shiny one. Oh yes, that is a nice one. There we go, burnished brass. Fortunately, it seems there's only the one wasp that was in here. <laughs> so no damage to the moths. Good. Um, so there's a um, oh, another light emerald. I think you have one in a pot just now. Yes, yeah. But that one's slightly greener, I think. Yeah, more emerald at least. There is a little slightly. micro on there, which is Agapeta harmana, little yellow thing. Was that on the this? same side? It's a tiny little yellow thing. Oh, no. yellow. Sorry. It must be on the other side then. Oh no, it's gone. It must have flown. Yeah, it's not there anymore. You have a shield bug on your shoulder. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yes. There we go. There's a dead wasp in here. And on the end of this one, it doesn't fly. There's a lovely green carpet. Oh, yeah. There we go. It's a fresh one. They lose that green very quickly. Um, so once they've been flying for a day or two, right. they can be almost white by really? the time they've Right, had so a that's few only flights. emerged. So that's quite recently emerged. Yes. There's another burnished brass on the other side, mm -hmm. and a wainscot, and a square spot rustic, and a large yellow underwing. Wee. Wee. No, underwing's off. What's all happening? There's a large yellow there, and two more under there. Some brimstone still in here, and they're gone. Um, this is possibly slightly pinker, rosy, rustic there. Oops. Square spot rustic and cetaceous and large yellow underwing again. And here we've got rosy rustic, common wainscot, and flounced rustic. Oh, and that was a worn green carpet, it just flew off. So there's another rat flounced rustic there, it's maybe slightly better than mine. Mm -hmm. We're nearly there. 
Uh, sort of vines rustic, square spot rustic. Uh, something too worn to identify. And a very, very worn blood vein. That one there. Oh yes, very The well. line that goes right across the wing is the blood vein, mm -hmm. but it should be red. Right. And the moth itself should be a sort of creamy colour, and it's almost faded to nothing. Mm, yeah. It's really tatty as well. But that's a blood vein. And there's a shame that's in poor condition. It must be right at the end of its flying season. Square spot rustic, large yellow underwing and snout. <laughs> And that's all the boxes. There may be a few things in the bottom. There's certainly some shield bugs. Yes, there are, aren't all there? Over the, uh, all over the thing and um, brimstone. And in here, now it's all large yellow underwings, I think. Um, Let's come on over. Go in there Thank you. Yeah. I can't see anything else, actually. Um, there's a tiny. Oh, there's a. Square spot rustic and a tiny micro there, but uh, and a wasp. There is one more wasp in there. Mm, nice, I see <laughs> Ooh, the there goes the shield bugs. The shield bugs are off. And that's that's about that. Except this one here, which I didn't see here, in the middle there. Yeah. We're talking about the large yellow underwings. Um, having that black spot in the corner, and that mm -hmm. doesn't have that. It's slightly smaller. Um, if you compare it to the this one, you see. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that is a lesser yellow underwing. Oh right. So it's slightly smaller than the, the large. Yeah. And here, if I can get him to sit. Oh no, that's square spot rustic. Sorry, forget that. So yeah, so that's a lesser yellow underwing. So that's a different species, but as I say, it's all quite. Hard. You know, if I let it move, I don't mm. know if you can focus on that, can you? Yes, yeah. Then, oh, oh, you can see the yellow as they go. Yeah, you can see a flash of it, can't you? There, you see. Oh, yeah. And there it goes. Yeah. So, there Lovely. We go. Well, thank so you that, so that, much, Dave, for bringing these. But quite a lot of moths, but uh, much, uh, much of the dark brown ones. Yes. Which, uh, happens at this that's time of the year. much what we were anticipating, yes. and that's normal, yeah. isn't it? Well, Dave, thank you so much for bringing this moth trap to us over the last couple of months. Yes. Uh, and thank you all for watching at home. Um, as always, we will release these moths responsibly and yes. pop them into a safe spot in uh, the undergrowth that we have along here in our orchard.